Hi everyone, Dr. Bruce here. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the idea of partial pressures and how oxygen and carbon dioxide are moved between the lungs, the blood, and the cells and tissues. So let's begin with the concept of partial pressure. So air is a gas, and air is also a mixture of individual gases. So here they all are, oxygen, nitrogen, argon, water vapor, carbon dioxide. So the pressure that air exerts is really a combination of the individual pressures of each gas. And that's Dalton's law. So Dalton's law says the total pressure of a gas is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of each of the individual gases. So this is denoted in healthcare as PO2, which means the partial pressure of oxygen, or PCO2, which is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. You may also see the designation PaO2 or PaCO2. The little a stands for arterial. So this is the partial pressure of arterial oxygen or arterial carbon dioxide. So let's see how this comes into play with moving oxygen from the lungs to the blood to the tissues and, and so on. So one of the first sort of simple rules, one of my simple physiology rules, is that everything goes where it needs to go. So oxygen goes from the lungs to the blood to the tissues and cells because that's where it needs to go. The cells need oxygen in order to make energy, otherwise you cease to exist. And so a byproduct of that is the production of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide also goes where it needs to go. It goes from the cells and tissues back into the blood and then out of the lungs and it's exhaled. So that's the first thing. The second rule that you need to know is that everything is greatest at the source. So the source of oxygen is the lungs. That's where it's coming in. That's the source. There's a continuous supply of oxygen. So that's where the PO2 is the highest. So the PO2 is about 104 millimeters of mercury in the alveolus or the lungs. And so it has to move into the blood. So the PO2 is actually has to be less than 104, and it is. The deoxygenated blood PO2 is about 40 millimeters of mercury. So the 104 meets the 40, we have a partial pressure gradient. So oxygen can now diffuse into the blood. Oxygen diffuses into the blood, which raises the PO2 of the blood up to 104 millimeters of mercury. So oxygen is now carried through the blood via hemoglobin. It combines with hemoglobin and is carried in the blood over to the tissues. Before it reaches the tissues, it, the blood mixes with some deoxygenated blood, which lowers the PO2 to 95 millimeters of mercury. In order for oxygen to move from the blood into the tissues, we have to have another partial pressure gradient. And we do. The PO2 of the tissues and the cells is about 40 millimeters of mercury. This means that oxygen can now diffuse from the higher PO2 of 95 to the lower PO2 of 40. Oxygen then diffuses into the tissues where it's needed. This lowers the blood PO2 to 40 millimeters of mercury, which is the same as in the tissues. And this travels back to the lungs and the process starts all over again. Let's take a look at carbon dioxide. It's really the same process. So the PCO2 in the tissues is at the high is the highest because that's the source of carbon dioxide, which is about 45 millimeters of mercury. In order to move carbon dioxide from the cells and tissues into the blood, the PCO2 has to be less. So the PCO2 of oxygenated blood is about 40 millimeters of mercury. This means there's a nice little partial pressure gradient so carbon dioxide can move from the 45 to the 40 via diffusion. This raises the PCO2 to 45, so the blood PCO2 goes up to 45, and carbon dioxide is carried mostly via the bicarbonate ion over to the lungs. So now we have to unload the carbon dioxide from the blood to the lungs. So we have to have another partial pressure gradient, and we do. The PCO2 here is about 45 millimeters of mercury, and the PCO2 in the alveolus is a little bit less, about 40. So the 45 meets the 40, carbon dioxide can move down its partial pressure gradient and diffuses into the lungs and is removed by exhalation. This then drops the PCO2 down to 40, and the process starts all over again. 
So hopefully you've learned something about the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the lungs and the blood and the tissue and partial pressures. And we'll see you next time.